Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy, Green Pastures Farm. This is how you know when you've got really good hay. Uh, they leave the stockpile to come to the hay. Of course, this has been grazed uh, back oh, about three months ago, three to four months ago. And so the goodie's been taken out of here, but you know, you can tell uh, they're still getting some grazing out of it. So what we're doing is we're giving them about a bale of stockpile and then uh, two bales of this hay we've got over here on the side of this farm. So we're going to try and feed this hay up. I don't want to have any of it left over, but I want to show you what we call high quality hay. First of all, the cows are telling you it's really good. <laughs> um, this is orchard grass. It's got a little bit of fescue in it, but mainly orchard grass. Uh, it's got some rye in it. Uh, Lespedeza, Timothy, uh, I've seen some red top in it. I mean, it's just a mixture of cool season grasses. But, I mean, the cows are loving it. There's some Timothy. Hey, it just smells good. I mean, I'm, I don't even have my nose up to it. Oh, man. There's Lespedeza. See the little, the little leaves there? That's Lespedeza. They call that the poor man's alfalfa. What they mean by that is Lespedeza grows on really poor soil, or it can, and it, it does quite well. So if you've got really acidic soil, it's more on the acid side. Rather than trying to get uh, alfalfa to grow on it, uh, Lespedeza will. The cows love Lespedeza. Man, look at that. Good man, no wonder they left their stockpile. I would too. Whew. Tell you what, that is some really, really premium. You know, and we've unrolled several bales. I mean, I haven't seen one, one incidence of mold. Anyway, that's when you know somebody knows what they're doing. So people say, well, why don't you bail hay? Well, I don't, I don't have the equipment. I'm not good at bailing hay and I don't want to bail hay. So I'll buy hay and bring it onto the farm and uh, let somebody else bail it that knows how to bail it. It has the equipment and that's what they do. They bail hay. So you can't do everything really well. Pick out what you're good at and be good at it. And don't try and do everything. There's some things you're not gonna be good at. These cows are pretty good at staying fat. <laughs> My goodness, 420. And she's just starting to get a few wrinkles there. She's springing a little bit. Isaac counted 40 some cows it looks like they should start calving in probably the next, you know, in three weeks or so. And that'll be about the right, first of April. This is uh, March 9th, I believe it is. I leave uh, for West Virginia in the morning, going to the uh, Morgantown Grazing Conference there in West Virginia. And they're going to be out there a couple of days, giving a few talks. And uh, I love going to West Virginia because that's where the Judy's settled when they came into america way back uh, they, judy's were from switzerland and the, the rumor was when they came through west virginia with all the mountains it reminded them of their homeland and so that's where they set up shop and there's still judy's in west virginia today there's actually one area there that's called judy's gap and another one called judy's pass it was named after some judy's way back Well, I tell you what, folks, I've really got a nice crew here. Isaac, Connor, Isaac and Connor and David are just unbelievable. You know, they all get along. You always hear them laughing and kidding with each other. We spent the whole afternoon, all four of us, inoculating some more shiitakes. We've got a heck of a pile over there. I think we're up over a thousand now. And uh, we still got uh, probably 400 left out in the woods that we got to haul in yet. But 
we're making it we're, we're way we're way over half done <laughs> i'd say we're three-fourths of the way done but uh you know you get four people working at something it goes pretty quick but uh, these are south pole cattle they're a four-way cross a red angus cinepole red angus cinepole barzona and hereford you see some of them have white on them white faces that comes from the hereford and i've got a few crosses in here that are black uh, those would be half south pole and half black angus oh they're doing good but we're unrolling the hay on the piece on the strip that we gave them this morning so tonight uh they got a little strip over here right in front of us it's clean doesn't have any manure on it and it hasn't been grazed yet so in the morning of course they'll get full on some hay they'll go out there and start grazing some of that stockpile in the morning that's where we'll unroll our hay i don't like unrolling hay <coughs> on stockpile that hasn't been grazed because all you do is covering it up but uh I tell you what, it just makes me so thankful to be in the ruminant grazing business where we have these animals that can make it on forage without having to feed them grain. I don't have a plow, I don't have a disc, I don't have a planter. I don't have to put glyphosate down, I don't have to put chemical fertilizers, the herbicides, the pesticides, the fungicides, you know, buy 250 $250 bushel seed corn. I mean, it just goes on and on. You know, $250,000 tractor, a million dollar combine. Oh, where does it stop? And now with the, this fossil fuel thing, I mean, folks, this, this fossil fuel, you gotta even fill up your cars. Now I noticed the other day, that was before uh, we put a, you know, put a stop to buying Russian oil, which um, it was already going up before that. It didn't matter, but uh, diesel hit around here. I think it's 485 now, and a week ago it was like 375, 375, 385. So this went up, you know, a buck in the last week. And it's probably going to go higher. They're saying 200 dollars, 200 dollars a barrel. Right now, I think it's at 130. So if it gets up to 200, we'll be paying probably seven eight dollars for unleaded gas uh folks you've got to get your cattle your know, operation set up where it can run with a four-wheeler went by a guy this morning he had a great big old tractor after unrolling hay and leaving ruts in his field and heck, just to start that tractor up he used more fuel than this thing does right here it's got a three and a half gallon tank on it it'll run you pretty much all week and uh, there's three guys on that pull with a 1,200 pound net wrap bait. Oh, and I tell you, it's soft out here. It's going to get a lot softer. We're going to get snow tonight. We got a winter storm morning out, and it's going to get soft. We're supposed to get four to five inches of snow, and it's going to get warm. That'll melt. So we're going to have soft on top of soft. And if you're bringing your tractor out here in these fields in these kind of conditions, you're gonna have ruts. And when you have ruts, then you're not gonna grow any grass in those ruts. You're gonna grow weeds. And it compacts your soil. You know what I'm so excited about though? Look at all this manure out here. That's coming out of these cows. They're growing a calf inside them. Some of these later calves are still sucking a little bit. Cows wean them themselves. We don't wean the calves. And it's just a natural, it's, it's what's happened for thousands of years. Thousands of years, I think that's pretty cool. So we're in the right business. We don't have to have a lot of equipment. Um, you don't, it's not gonna break the bank to get started, especially if you can go lease some land. You buy the land, it's, it's gonna take up all your savings. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Land's not a bad investment if you can pay cash for it, but when you go get a loan, then you're a servitude to the bank for the rest of your life trying to make the payments on it. That's not any fun. Go find you some land to lease. It's out there. Mr. Isaac. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Cut the cat, man. Cut, 
pet the cat mat and got it on there backwards. Look at that. So it's just barely thrown it off in little chunks. There's just basically no pitchforking except for your first start where you have the uh, the cover on the bail. You have a little bit there, but oh, we talked about some good hay. Hey, it's just full of spadiza. All kinds of good stuff. Mm. At least you want to go get a bowl and put some milk on it. Have me a bowl of hay. <laughs> it smells that darn good. See, he's making a windrow. That one made about a one and a half. Sometimes they'll go two or three. You can go and go and go and go and go before they come off. What's that? Sure, some healthy cattle. Yeah, they're looking good, aren't they? Yeah. I was just telling them the hay smells so good. Yeah. The cows are eating it. I mean, that's like it's candy. Yeah. That's like snapshot of the summer. Yeah, that's orchard grass. Really good stuff. Quite a bit of lespedes in here too. Yeah. You notice uh, Isaac took the hook off, guys and ladies. Those of y'all got bail unrolled, I know some videos people are using that they're unrolling it with the hook on. It's a no-no. Take the tears hook off. The yeah, it tears up your winch. Take the hook off before you unroll the hay. And then you can always do that. There you go. Ready to put another one on. But don't, don't leave that hook on there as you're unrolling hay because all it's going to do is just go like that the whole time it's going to beat your winch up and uh, you're going to you're going to tear the gears out of it so don't do that somebody said the other day that i need to come up with a t-shirt and on the front of it it needs to say greg says don't do that <laughs> well probably not a bad Probably not a bad uh, saying to put on a t-shirt. I do say that quite a bit because it seems like uh, people do things that are kind of goofy sometimes and I just have to say it, don't do that, you know? But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. Uh, I've got a, a guy coming at the house I gotta meet here in a little bit, but boy, what a beautiful evening. You would never know that we're in a winter weather advisory right now. It's coming. And uh, I don't know, they're saying four to six inches of rain. I'm sorry, of snow, but it's gonna get down to zero. It might even get down below zero. And it's crazy, but today it hit 45, 50. We were, heck, we were plugging mushroom logs in uh, just the shirt sleeves. We didn't have a coat on or gloves or anything. But you won't be doing that tomorrow or Friday. It's supposed to get change but you know what it's uh it's march 9th and uh we're about three weeks from grass folks if we can keep that zero degree temperature away from us this stuff will take off so with that i'm gonna go ahead and sign off everyone new to the channel hit that subscribe button on the way out and everyone have a great day and we'll see you down the road